the largest single area of knowledge work happens to be teaching. And the last change in teaching was 550 years ago in the 15th century when the printed book came in. We are still teaching exactly the same way. And it's very ineffectual. But take that right grand great well, grandson of mine. who is computer literate as they all are, who basically was computer literate before he could read. You know what I'm saying. Yes. Completely computer literate. Uh, He's going to force us to change teaching radically because he's changing learning radically. He's, well, he has no trouble in getting access to the internet. He knows how to do that. He has no trouble. Uh, using the computer as an information machine. When it first came in, everybody looked upon it as a big and fast adding machine. And my first contribution was to say, no, it's an information machine. I said that in 1950, 1948, or even earlier, yes, yeah, seven. And everybody thought I was crazy was an adding machine. And for a very long time, that's what most people used it for. Maybe the Japanese were the first to use it as an information machine. And today, that, well, that eight-year-old uses the computer as an information machine, much to the despair of her teachers. Uh, her teachers, I mean, they, they don't know how to handle those eight-year-olds who come. What do you do? I had a former student of mine, very able young woman, who teaches third grade, loves it. But it's totally overwhelmed by those eight-year-olds who come to class with a laptop. And how do you teach them? Because those kids check what she's saying and says, teacher, that ain't true. <laughs> this is what the internet tells me. And they cannot multiply. They don't have to. They do that on the computer. The computer multiplies. They punch in 89570 and 72473, and they push a button, and the computer multiplies. And they will never learn how to multiply. No, I'm reporting almost verbatim what she's saying.